How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. So I've decided to review phones. I'm going to be starting off with the Galaxy S5. Now, that's my idea. So I'm going to be moving up to the Galaxy S8 and you know, uh, after that, I'll just see what comes up. Um, but if you want me to review a certain phone, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, before we get started, link will be in the description if you want to buy this phone. So go ahead and check out the description. Also in the description, I will be leaving some timestamps. So because this video is going to be long, you can go ahead and check out the description and jump to a certain part that you want to watch. So this is a detailed review of the Galaxy S5. As like I said, it's not the newest phone, but I got this just for the test and everything. So this is a 5 inch device. Uh, typical flagship phones are 5 inches because people say anything bigger than that is too big. Now this I find is a bit big. Um, I know I've been using 6 inch devices and bigger and you know somewhere around they're way too big um, But I, d I didn't know that because this is my first 5 inch device and this I found when I first got it out of the box To be very very tiny very very small But I've gotten used to it and now it just kind of feels like it's big um, In a way just sometimes it feels big sometimes it feels really really small For instance when you're gaming on anything it's going to be too small but when you're using it for anything else, it's just about the right size. Okay, so let me just go ahead and show you guys around it. So at the front over here, you got your 5.1 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display. Actually, we get onto the specs in a bit. And now on the front, you've got the display. You got all your good bits at the top, your light sensor, your earpiece, your uh, front facing camera. At the bottom of here, you got the home button. You got the up drawer button and you got the back button. Now this is also a fingerprint sensor. So you can swipe down like that and that will act as a fingerprint reader. Um, on the right side, you've only got your power button. And on the left side, you got your volume up and volume down. On the top, uh, that's an IR um, transmitter, I think, uh, infrared. So you can use this with the TV as a remote or something. But I've never really gone into that. And that's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack out. On the bottom, you have the microphone. And then under this flap, if I get this open, easy to open by the way, is a micro USB 3 cable for charging and also for OTG and everything. So that's cool. And at the back, you've got your mono speaker at the back and you've got your heart rate monitor and then you've got your 16 megapixel camera. So let's go ahead and open the back. There's a hinge over here and it cracks the back open. So I've stopped the lens down a bit. So you can see this a bit better. So you've got your battery over here. I think it's 2800 milliamps. I'll just go ahead and take a look at the specs after uh, just in a bit. Mono speakers down here. I've got some pins over there. I don't know what the hell that is for. Your SIM card is over here and then your micro SD card slot is over there. It uses a mini uh, micro SIM card. It doesn't use a nano one. So that's just something to keep in mind. And the back over here is actually quite slippery. Uh, just something worry about um, um, because it has just slipped out my pocket here and there when I'm sitting on the couch um, now as you can see this is a rubber coating or, uh, over here and this is for waterproofing so this phone and also there's a flap that this flap over here is also used for waterproofing so it is water resistant it's not waterproof I mean it is waterproof um, up to 30 meters for about 30 minutes or something um, but but that's for emergency purposes in case you use your phone outside in the rain or something just you know you'll be okay um, have water droplets on the screen it still works perfectly fine better than the xperia phones they just go all mental and berserk with the water on the screen and this one is a lot better um, but it is waterproof but don't just take this as like completely waterproof it's more like water resistant for only a certain amount of time then it can just do some water damaging so be careful with that Okay, so let me run you over the specs. So this has got a quad-core processor, Snapdragon 801, clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. It's got two gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, and that's like proper 16 gigs. Unlike the X that I looked at uh, recently. On the front over here, you got a 1080p 5.1 inch Super AMOLED display, and this is one of the best displays I've seen, uh, but it isn't the best. It's got a pixel density of uh, 432 ppi so uh, that's quite sharp um, i've seen better displays but this one has a bit of a drawback we'll get onto that in a bit and uh, you've got micro usb 3 cable for otg and also for charging super fast data transfer rate because of usb 3 but then again it's just a flimsy port don't mess around with it and we'll talk about camera later on all right let's talk about the um, design over here now compared to the s4 it has a lower 
body to screen ratio so it has a bit more of body than the screen and that means there's going to be a bit more barrels compared to the s4 and also the design is a bit more on the square side i kind of found it ugly but i'm going to be used to it um it kind of looks nice i mean especially the um back over here uh, people think you know the back because it's uh if I stop the lens down so it's got a bit of a design over here as you can see um people think this is not a good design but i actually i actually kind of like it it's not a grippy buck but it's good because uh it just looks nice it looks much better than galaxy s4 and a lot of the other phones i've seen uh but then again you can just get a case for it i'm not a huge fan of the design but it's definitely gotten better on the newer devices now on the side you've got a chrome finish but i don't know if that's plastic or not um, I have also heard some reports from people that it has been coming off and then this, it just turns into white. Um, hasn't really happened to me. And this is, a, a, I don't think it's a refurbished one. I think it just got it used. But as you can see, it's kind of held up pretty well. It hasn't got any scratches or anything. Um, mine just looks fine. Maybe that's just because I take care of my phones and devices properly. Boy it has gotten a bit dusty. I don't care about dust or anything about my phones. That's just fine. Uh, but design wise I, i'm actually i, I kind of like it but um some people don't um the front i'm not fond of because it has a, a more body ratio um, but it could have been better uh, with the galaxy s4 i prefer that um, just the screen ratio kind of thing going on um, but overall i think it looks kind of soft and curvy and stuff it's a bit different um so it kind of looks nice also the camera over here kind of hinges out a bit i don't know if you can see that so if you put it down on the phone it can be it's gonna rock about not funny all right so let's talk about the display now the display is really really good it's got really good viewing angles um, you won't be able to see it properly on this camera but um, as you can see you can read everything from different different angles um, but what I found is that um, this display is just a bit too dark outside other than that it's really really good it's super amoled so colors are really really amazing um but what i've also found is over here if you look over here it says touch sensitivity now you can turn that option on for better sensitivity so if you're using a gloves or something and you can use this without having to take them off so that's kind of nice it's very very responsive um if you look at it from different angles it changes the white balance ever so slightly goes a bit yellowy and then on this side it well it goes just goes a bit yellowy but if you look at it from straight forward the whites are white and the blacks are black now i don't know if this is the case with a lot of the phones but um the auto brightness is actually quite bad um and that's because it just kind of tends to jump instead of just not sliding or fading into a different brightness level it just kind of jumps um and i do like that but that's because i've gone used to other phones that actually don't do just jump all of a sudden just jumps from very low to very bright um it's just not professional it's more of on the toy side nothing to brag about really now talking about videos and this i'm gonna show you what it's like with black borders around so go ahead and do jump onto youtube so i'm just gonna turn the lights off for a moment okay so what i really like about the display on this phone is if it's gonna what i really like about the display is that the black levels are so black that you flipping can't see in the dark with it um i just turned the brightness up a bit because the phone's kind of struggling to pick that up Okay, so the black levels, I won't be able to show you in the video, but if you're looking at this in the dark, the blacks are just, it's basically just black. There's nothing there. And, and I know Super AMOLED displays just kind of turn off when it's black. The pixels turn off. Um, but I've never really seen it um, until recently with this phone. Um, I don't think it happened on the Q10. The display was still, had a bit of bleeding in the background, but... Uh, in the black levels but in this phone the boards are at the top and the bottom it's like they're invisible like they're not there so if you're looking at uh, videos and everything in the night um, all the phones disappeared you won't be able to see the phone you won't be able to see the border so it's just like a floating display and it's really really cool like that i really like that 
All right, let me just go ahead and go on memo over here. I'll show you what the keyboard does. So just make a new one. That was my notes. So um, what I find with the keyboard is I haven't been able to get used to this under the screen because I'm used to the BlackBerry Passport keyboard. I'll, I guess I'm just a physical keyboard guy. I mean, I wanted to get used to it, but I just couldn't. I tried, okay, just forgive me. But what I found is the swipe typing, and this is not um, the keyboard that comes with the, uh, this Samsung phone. Um, it actually has a, a swipe keyboard built into it, which is uh, the one that costs money on uh, the Google Play Store. And so if you use that, that might be a bit different. That's the one that comes with. Um, but this is the swipe keyboard, and it's free. So the swipe typing is actually a bit frustrating because it doesn't really get the word right all the time. And this is the same problem with the swipe keyboard that comes with this phone. You have two keyboards installed with the phone. That's the normal Samsung keyboard and also the swipe keyboard. Now, I didn't use the Samsung keyboard because there's no feedback. I just don't like it. So for that reason, I got the swipe keyboard and it hasn't really made much of a difference. The only thing it's done is just made it worse. It just kind of, of course, um, that's not what I wanted, right? Um, I don't know what to say. Um, it doesn't remember the word properly and everything. Um, I'm, I'm just really used to the BlackBerry keyboard. I can't get used to this. It's really frustrating. And the worst part is if you open up uh, Excel or Word, it just hides everything. It just, it just covers the whole thing. And in the typing area for... So let me just give you this example. So if I wanted to type, I start typing random stuff. Right, and then... All of a sudden, I've only got this tiny space over here. Now, that's not nice. If you make a landscape, there is literally no space on it. So, for work, we get to work later on. But this phone is a complete joke in this kind of department. I'm just going to go off and save it. Bloody. Now, another thing to point out is, if I go into the settings, um, what you find is, uh, I don't have the battery saving mode on, but for some reason, it's just kind of slugging about. Um, what you find is that everything is sorted out into categories, but I'm just so used to the stock Android stuff that and there's just so much more options that are irrelevant So there's more it's like duplicates or some things um, it, it just seems like that. I mean it probably isn't backup and then there's accounts Google that's cool, you know your backup stuff um, it, It's all sorted out, but the thing is I just can't get used to this uh, I'm used to just all the options in one place. Um, if I go into display, uh, there's going to be a bit of customization stuff going on over here, and then there's also some in personalization. So if you're looking for something, you might be in another category. So it's just a bit annoying. Um, I'm just used to the stock Android stuff. So this thing, I think, is a huge downgrade, but um, some people might like it. I personally don't, but whatever some things what's motion all about oh look gestures and air view irrelevant things so what i've been doing is if i go into search if i write multi window view um i've actually been oh wait i've actually been searching for everything that i normally look for so instead of looking for it in the options i just um look for it uh, i just search for it i mean so multi view is actually really good um it works well but some apps don't work so excel doesn't work so that's what i mean um, all the all the samsung apps do work and some google apps do work so you hold the back button i think there we go um i think you let it go and then all the apps that work are going to be over here if they're not then you can customize it edit and then they're all going to be in here. Um, so these are all the apps that do work. So there are quite a few. So WhatsApp actually has a huge score. It works with a lot of things. Also in ultra battery saving mode, which I'll get to later on. And there are a few apps that don't really support this. For So for example, Microsoft apps, they are not here. Now I can't just... It's flipping annoying. Let's go on an example. So I've got YouTube opened. And I want to... And I want to shop at the same time. Let's say in Amazon. So I'm looking at a review of a product and then I look for a product. Now it's kind of nice that you can resize it uh, and this works really, really well. But what I find is if you pop the keyboard up, one of the app is gone. So if you're typing notes or anything, something like that, um, it's just gonna hide one of the apps. So you maybe you're copying somewhere down and it's probably just gonna hide it. 
or maybe it just doesn't do it. I'm, I'm, I've, I haven't really uh, gone through this because I, I kind of think the screen is a bit too small for this multi window kind of thing. Um, but it works well again. Um, I haven't really been paying much attention to this, but uh, because it's it's a bit of something that's made to be used on a big, you know, on a bigger phone. Um, but it works well over here. Again, you can do it, you know. Go to that speaker pad and we'll look for a review on speaker pads over here. And then we can watch the review and then we can just look for them over here. But as you can see, really, really tiny. Uh, again, I'm just not complaining. It's actually very, very productive and quite nice to use. Now, if you got the multi window view, uh, enabled if you press the uh, apps button and you can actually see an icon over here so in the compatible apps even settings is not compatible with the uh, multi view um, but you got a, a option over here you press that button and then it's gonna just ask you for another app over here you can go ahead and open youtube so just swap it around um, but that's just to enable our open app in the multi window view so that works really well um, some phones don't have this i think so that's kind of nice Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the fingerprint reader or the fingerprint sensor. So in the home button over here, you've actually got a fingerprint sensor. So you have to swipe down and they will uh, act as a fingerprint reader and they will unlock your phone. It also works in um, the web browser or some application where they actually ask you to do your login um, on the email and everything. And you can just swipe down instead and they'll instantly log you in. So it's quite fast. But if we go into settings, I find the fingerprint reader should be oh NFC is down here not in network connections that's funny oh here it is fingerprint reader or finger scanner now if I go into manager which is basically like a second up as you can see here I've only got three fingers registered so you can see you can only up register up to three fingers now that's not a bad deal Again, you can at least use the fingerprint reader, but I was expecting unlimited fingers. So I can use any finger on my hand to just log in and stuff. So it's it's kind of, I mean, I've been registering over and over again, and they just keep replacing the fingers and stuff. So it's kind of annoying. So I've got, I've got them really labeled. You can actually uh, do nothing but just delete them from here. So it works with only three fingers so you can register up to three fingers and at times it just doesn't work well i mean it's kind of annoying to use because if the reason i register the other number fingers is so if it's laying down somewhere i can just do this and they would and they would just register the finger now it does even when i'm doing a video but it just doesn't really work well there we go worked that's good but it just at times it just doesn't really recognize it either way it has a fingerprint reader and it actually works so be thankful now the second thing this phone has is a heart rate monitor and everything so it's at the back over here you can put your finger on it like this and then it will actually scan your um, your health and everything it always says poor health by the way for me i don't know why um so you can actually do a few things you can just monitor yes it's, it's also got a pedometer inside it so you can count your steps and i found it funny because on the s4 it doesn't happen and on this one there's actually something moving inside you can probably not hear it or you probably can but there's a pedometer and it's actually going to count the steps um properly at times well most of the time it does it properly so you can um, measure a few things over here blood pressure heart rate and your stress and it actually works quite well now again i don't know if this is as good as a proper one but because it's just built into the phone and you can just don't know if you can actually fit a big one in there but it actually works um just go ahead and do this shows a little um, um graph over here that actually shows you your heart rate and mine is going to be always wonky because i don't know if it's either doesn't check it properly or it's just wonky and stuff and the vibrates as well so oh yeah that, that, that's that's not good is it i'm just working right now average resting range I'm, i've just done exercise that's good so that means uh i don't know but it checks your heart rate it works very well 
Now, one of the problems I had with the XGODI was uh, it didn't have enough RAM to do social media. This one has 2 gigs of RAM, so everything that's over here is, if it's all running in the background, which it is, I've got them all enabled. If all of these are running in the background, there's no stutters, nothing. It works perfectly fine. And uh, obviously, just like any other phone, I'm not going to go on the apps because, you know, I have some stuff on it. Um, but it, it, it works perfectly fine. You can use this for a multimedia or for a typical person who uses multimedia, this device is really, really good. Alright, so let's go on to the file manager if I can find it. There we go. Um, and we're going to do some video playback test. And I'm also going to show you how the speaker sounds. Um, go into device storage, please, and download. Here you go. So uh, I've got some videos over here which are in different different formats and everything. And so lowest quality to the highest quality. And it's just gone so high that it just doesn't recognize it anymore. So this is a um, um, big book bunny, I think it's called. Yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and focus on this. And we're going to do a video playback test. And um, I'll also go ahead and put the volume louder. There we go. So you can actually hear it. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the video playback test. Start with 480p. Now this can handle it, but it just doesn't do the... It, it, it doesn't do the audio properly at times. Because it's around round. It just doesn't support the audio on one of the files. 4AP works, 1080p 30fps. That works perfectly fine as well. And then you won't see this 1080p 60fps. And this works fine as well. Uh, it's a lot smoother. Just put the volume up because the speaker is not really good on this phone. It's rich and everything, but it's mono and it's just not loud. Not the loudest, but it's, it really gets kind of loud, but it's not the loudest or stuff. Okay, it's time to do 4K test. Now, this headphone does have a camera that actually records in 4K, so it should be able to play back 4K videos. So 4K video playback on here is perfectly fine, 4K 30fps that is, uh, I mean Ultra HD, this is not 4K. Um, so let's go ahead and go on Ultra HD 60fps. So it can't handle 4K 60 FPS and then there's no point going into native because it just it just won't um, it just won't handle it. Oh play me, it doesn't even play it. Um but 4K 30 FPS you'll be fine, but anything above that's not gonna work. So 4K video playback test, that's that's good. 4K on a hundred pound phone, so that's fine. Works just very, very nicely and stuff. Okay, so one thing I'm going to talk about is the digital to analog convert inside this phone, the DAC. That's to do with the headphones and music. Now, what I found is, uh, the good thing about the DAC is that you know, the noise level is very low. And it's um, quite nice. It's definitely in the hi-fi range. And it does support 192 kHz audio 24-bit. The DAC inside this phone actually sounds really, really enjoyable to listen to. Not only is it high quality, it does sound quite good like as in high fineness it's got a punchy bass and it's got a decent sound stage but then again it's not as good as a external duck or something so um, that's just something to keep in mind but it's quite good it's okay it's just very very nice for a device that's now uh, very very cheap okay so now now let's go ahead and do a speaker test um this is just going to be a quick one this is not to show you that 
uh, how it sounds in every way and stuff. Uh, this is just one problem I've been having with this phone, um, the tilt stuff. Um, but I'm gonna play this soundtrack now. I'm not gonna use it on the loud, uh, go on the loudest volume because it is a bit loud. Um, it's not the loudest, but it is a loudspeaker, it's decent, it's clear. The thing is, it's mono, but the rest is actually quite nice. It doesn't distort, um, it is clear and it is uh, got a little bit of warmth to it, so it's uh, soft and stuff. So it's really, really nice. Let's go ahead and have a listen to this. So it's definitely got a decent bass, um, but what I will say is, um, since it's at the back of the phone, if you're going to be enjoying some content, it's not going to be the best. It's going to annoy everybody else who's around you, but you, because it's not point pointing at you. And this is a problem that um, even the Galaxy S3 and S4 and S2 have. And my sister actually plays uh, videos on these all day, and they're just annoying. It's too loud and she just can't hear it, so it's, it's going to be the same problem over here. You're probably not going to be able to hear it until you, you know, use a really loud volume. But and everybody else is just going to be really annoyed because it is um, a really, really crap sound compared to an actual hi-fi system. Uh, you know, that everybody could actually enjoy. It will sound good. But this um, is a mobile speaker. So it's going to annoy everybody else. So you can't just put your hand like this. Um, and it does help, uh, help quite a bit. But then again, it's not the best speaker. Alright, I might have forgotten to mention something. As you can see over here, it's the, got the signal um, turned on, but I've taken my SIM card out, it shows over here. And I forgot to mention uh, the SIM card quality and stuff. You know how, how good it sounds in terms of call quality and stuff like that. So let me just go ahead and go over that. So the signal strength is actually quite good. Uh, I don't know why it's actually still got a signal. Uh, I have taken my SIM out. It doesn't happen on the BlackBerry Passport or anything. Um, the call quality is really, really good. Um, my clients who I've talked to or my family members who I've talked to, they all said that the quality is a lot better than the BlackBerry Passports and that's kind of funny because the BlackBerry Passport has four microphones that are used for noise cancelling. But then again, uh, you know, um, call quality was good on the earpiece as well as the, um, um, as, as well as to someone who I was talking to. Um, that's, so that's nice. I also forgot to mention that it's actually a, a very light phone. It feels a lot like a toy or something. Uh, when I first got it out of the box, I was quite surprised at how light it is. Mainly because I've just gotten used to the BlackBerry Passport because it is a bit of a heavy phone. It, it's more like built like a tank. Now this feels like it's built out of, out of plastic and everything. It's really light. It feels like if I'm going to drop it, it's going to break into pieces, um, but it doesn't. I think it's built quite solidly. It is built solidly. I've gone used to the weight, and whenever I pick it up and all that, it, now it just feels like it's got some weight to it. But when I first got it out, it was, um, it was like feather, really, really light. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the camera. Now, this is... Um, uh, a really good thing on, on, on this phone and uh, now compared to the Galaxy S4 they have changed the sensor um, So this is a newer sensor. What I found is with, with this phone if I can just zoom out just a bit I don't want to ruin it, but I'm not sure if it's gonna even come out good um, But this is um, at the back. It's got a 16 megapixel camera now The only thing I don't like about it is it's no optical image stabilized So it doesn't have optical image stabilization, but everything else is actually quite good we we'll get on to the image quality in a bit. I have taken I have taken some pictures around, um, but we just want to let you know I'm not a huge camera guy on phones. When I talk about cameras, I'm on about getting actual cameras and not the ones on the phones because uh, you do have a problem, uh, and that's because it doesn't have manual manual controls. Sorry. Um, so for that, I got an application which is called Spotlight. Now this will allow me to record um, video and also take pictures uh, with manual control, but. It's a little cumbersome, I don't want to use that. But anyways, let's go on to the camera and talk about the camera. Now, despite the fact that it's got a new sensor, um, I'm not sh I am not. haven't really tested the Galaxy S4 yet, so I'm not sure what's better or what's worse. But what I can say is it's actually a really good camera. Now, when I first took pictures with this, I was actually quite disappointed, uh, but that's because it automatically is on auto mode, so it automatically went on to the beauty mode. I shows the, which mode is over here. You can go ahead and change it. I'm not sure if I've actually selected beauty, but again, it's on auto and it just went on that. Um, 
there are few mods over here now i haven't downloaded any so uh, you got your dual camera which will uh, take pictures with both cameras at the same time and then you just snap one at the corner and the other one around um, so that's kind of cool you can also use that for videos i think uh, so you can show the whatever your camera is facing up and then wherever you look like <laughs> in the video as well um, but i'm not going to go into mods um, again i just left it on open so that's why i'm not going to go into it but what you find over here if you click this this is hdr so it's going to turn hdr on and it's got live hdr so it, uh, whatever your screen shows when you're uh, pointing the camera around that's what it's going to um, capture uh, as in it's actually live hdr so i'm just going to go ahead and turn that off because um, it does improve the image quality a lot it just brings up the shadows a lot but if it's um if it's exposed for the sky i mean uh, the shadows then it's not going to bring back a lot of highlights um if, and if it's exposed normally then it's going to improve the image quality a lot um, by bringing the shadows and a little bit of the highlights back in but um, it does feel like it's all just a complete drawing. That's the only bad thing about it. So there's this button here, which is um, if it actually pops it up, um, selective focus. This is just a digital effect that's going on. Basically, some um, uh, again, they're trying to beat DSLRs and just throw them out of the water. But it doesn't work very well. It it does work okay. I have tested it, but I've just deleted the pictures. But basically, it's just gonna blur out the background a bit more. And it does it digitally, so at times I did find that it messes it up. It just messes it up. Um, but it, then again, it's really good. It just gives you a shallow depth of field. But um, here's the camera to uh, here's the uh, button to switch the camera to the front-facing camera. And if you jump into options, there are tons of options over here. So as you can see, it's got a lot of options. You can change the exposure, the shutter, you can change the guidelines, uh, you can change the um, well, you can change everything. Um, it's quite nice and what this option is is audio zoom basically when you are recording a video and you zoom in it's actually going to change the sound quality to if, uh, actually like a direct microphone so it's just going to narrow it down so you can only hear what you zoom into and it cancels out everything around you the more you zoom in the more it does it so it's really really good i haven't tested it because i haven't taken any video on it now as you can see here in terms of video wise it takes 4k or ultra hd and then you've also got 1080p, 720p, and then the others. Um, okay, so when you're um, recording in 4K, since it's going to be using a lot of power, it's not going to allow you to do some of the things like HDR. So you won't be able to use HDR. Um, and, uh, let's go ahead and uh, show you the pictures. Um, you can select the megapixel count. or oh, always keep it high. Don't just mess around with it. Let's go ahead and show you the pictures which are in here. So I've been taking pictures. Now this is... Uh, one is without HDR and one is with HDR over here. If I can just go ahead and show you up close because I think it'll look better on the phones, uh, thingy, uh, cameras. Alright, so this is uh, the one uh, with HDR and then this is the one without HDR. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of difference. Now, the part I'm showing you is this tree over here mainly. This is with HDR. Just keep an eye on the tree and then this is without HDR. So it's basically just brought up the shadows a bit. But as you can see, the highlights don't really change much, if at all. Um, so that's what I was talking about in terms of HDR. It does improve the dynamic range just a bit, but it doesn't do it properly. Like, I don't know, I'll just forget about it. It works and it doesn't do the yeah. Um The image quality is actually good. 16 megapixels is good. And this is one of them is with HDR. One of them is without HDR. As you can see here, um, this is a bit bright, but I think this is perfectly exposed and then it just brings a bit more detail back uh, Just a bit more detail with HDR um, Move on a bit. I'll just talk, show you this. So this is with HDR uh, if I, Properly, I don't know why I'm doing this. So this picture is with HDR and This is without HDR. So it looks much more natural more analog that's because we're not using hdr but then if you look at hdr it looks a lot more cartoony and it's basically because it's brought up the shadows and it's brought down the highlights just a bit so if you see here the cloud over here is clipped um, but it looks quite it, it looks decent now what i don't like about this hdr is everything is just really harsh look at the outline around that cloud over there it's like all of a sudden everything is in the dynamic range and then all of us then it just clipped off for no reason um, in an instant so it just looks a bit like a water painting to me 
um, but detail wise everything is really really good uh, it's just one thing i don't like about it is everything just looks a bit soft uh, it's like a painting it's like a water painting but um, it does capture a decent amount of detail this was in direct sunlight as well so what i kind of mean is since the phone's camera sensors are small if you can look at this detail it's uh, compared to a DSLR, um, what you're going to be able to tell as a difference is that everything on the uh, DSLR is actually like a proper scan. Now, this looks a bit like a painting. Now, don't take it too bad. Uh, this is probably the best camera I've seen on a phone, much better than Blackberry Passports, in terms of how it looks, uh, in terms of detail and everything. But it isn't as, uh, it isn't optical image stabilized, so that's one thing I don't like about it. Um, but it, it has really sharp focus, it focuses really, really well. Um, as you can see here, it's got really nice detail, but uh, it just it looks over processed or something, it looks a bit over sharpened um, at times. Um, that's what I like about the DSLRs, they just don't do processing if you can shoot raw. Uh, of course, in the future, I mean, in the newer models of phones, you can actually shoot RAW and it does uh, have a tremendous increase in uh, image quality. Now, this is um, a building over here. Now, it's brick wall, but as you can see, it's all muffled out. And that's because since the sensor is small, it catches a lot of noise and it does a noise reduction automatically. I don't know how to disable it. I didn't bother with it. Um, but as you can see, it just muffled up a bit. Um, just to get rid of the noise i don't think it's necessary to get rid of the noise in this scenario because the gray and the noise are actually kind of like it it makes pictures look kind of better so this is a picture i took um as you can see they cut a lot of detail on this bug over here so the camera is actually quite good no doubt about that okay so we're getting to the end of the review obviously as in length, it's not going to seem like the end because there's a bit left. So this uh, device is running Android 6.0.1. Uh, now Android 7 is out, so it's been updated since. Um, Samsung has done actually a good job, I think, of, of keeping this up to date. So April 1st of 2017, the security update is decent as well. Um, there are going to be other phones that are much older. So this has Android 6. This is quite nice. Of course, I don't expect it to have the latest at all the time, but that's just something to point out now one thing i don't like about it um is that whenever you turn it on it just fades in very very slowly at sometimes i think when it in when it fi finds that you're in the dark it actually fades in very very slowly um so that can be annoying at times because when you're actually not in the dark and it just takes a long time to just turn the screen on because it's fading it in um, it does a bit just in case it just also all of a sudden it pops into your face when you're in night or just taking the time so it just kind of fades in slowly uh, and that's kind of nice but it can get annoying because the light sensor doesn't work properly as in i've had some issues uh, when i'm outside or when i'm inside it doesn't change the backlight every time it does it uh, after a few uh, minutes or something it can get a bit annoying but i've gotten used to it and i think it, it just kind of works really well it's just not as good as the blackberry passport and if you're wondering why i'm referring you to the blackberry passport um is because that is that's the a really good competitor for this kind of phone so um, but just forget about it um, the blackberry passport is a completely different phone now in terms of gaming i've got a lot of games now what i found is since i had some uh, video playback uh, test files for this the big book bunny files they actually took up about three gigs of space i wasn't able to install a lot of games this is a 16 gigabyte model um so that's fine um i don't mind obviously it's my fault but i've gotten a few games and i had a few others as well which i've deleted because i didn't really play them at all um so these are a few games that i've got i'll just turn it portrait oh wait it isn't portrait what i'm doing now i'm not going to do a gaming test or something over here because that's going to take way too long i have a feeling the video is already really really long so let me just show you which games work or just tell about um uh, tell you which games do work so all of these funny enough they do actually work really really well a uh, motor world car factory is one i play and it does have a lot of um performance drops and that's because i think it tends to when it's doing something with the wi-fi is either uploading or downloading something it just does that um but i don't think you can play that game without wi-fi i'm not sure um now all of these games drain the battery like mm, they just suck it out of this phone 
other than Earn to Die 2, which is, I don't, I don't know what it is, it's not, it doesn't seem like the lightest game, but it just, uh, it kind of is, it, it, that game doesn't affect the battery a lot, but all of these, um, they actually chew up the battery, so let's get on to the battery test, now all of these games work really, really well, they got high graphics, it's 1080p, um, in terms of performance, they've only been tiny hiccups here and there, but other than that, everything is 1080p, 60fps, beautiful graphics, and decent experience for a phone uh, to game on. So the last thing I'm going to touch on is the battery life. Um, now, it has a 2800 mAh of battery. So that's for a phone, uh, I, I would assume that's quite big because the BlackBerry Passport has 3450 mAh. Um, but I want to point out that I've been ruined by the BlackBerry Passport once again. Um, but let's not get that into this again. I'm, I'm just sorry. Um, so what I find is without the battery saving mode on, which is over here, I'm, going to, I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. Um, what happens is... Without the battery saving mode, this phone is perfectly fine. It won't last you one day though, on a whole charge. You're gonna have to charge it at least once a day and use it quite lightly with the battery saving mode off. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I just found that the battery life just gets sucked so much. Even when you're using it just normally, it just kind of starts draining itself inside out. Um, it, it lasts on light usage about six hours. And that's like web browsing, maybe watching YouTube videos here and there actually that's going to be three hours but if you're doing something like um i don't know web browsing or just typing something down notes down or something like, it'll last you about six or seven hours now most of the time you're going to have it in your pocket so that should uh, when it's actually in sleep mode um it doesn't drain the battery a lot it just kind of pauses it there um, but when you know you're using it which is what you're going to do it's actually going to drain the battery uh, quite fast so then comes the solution which is um, battery saving mode so let's get on to those it actually has two battery saving modes and i'll get on to both of them in this video so once you're on uh, this menu here you don't have to come over here you can press the edit button and you can change all these around and the top two bars i think are the ones that appear right on the top over here and then the rest are you have to access by pressing that button so ultra battery saving mode is over here i mean ultra battery saving mode and then there's battery saving mode or so they call it power saving so let's go ahead and turn power saving on and it's going to ask you a few things and you know just to make sure going to click ok so what this does is actually limits the brightness and limits the display and everything of the phone um, other than the ram i think so one of the things i've uh, kind of found funny um, and i kind of got upset about it was the fact that in battery saving mode these navigation buttons don't really turn on so like they're completely off I, I can't show you it but they're like completely off and it, and it doesn't turn, let you turn them on also the display brightness is actually lowered um even lower than the lowest brightness in, in a way i guess i don't know if it makes any sense um but if it detects that you're in uh, a late environment it let you adjust it a bit but if it detects that you're in a really really dark environment it's not gonna let you do go any higher even if you're moving this about it's just not gonna let you change the brightness much now the thing that's definitely improved the battery life in the battery and saving mode is the fact that it just limits the cpu performance now that increases the battery life a lot it adds about uh, at least two to three hours more um, and also when it's in sleep mode it pauses everything so everything is just running in the background it just pauses it and i think it just disconnects from the wi-fi temporarily as well so that actually improves the battery life a lot uh, when it's in sleep mode and it's got battery saving on then it won't go down even a single percent or maybe one percent if you're lucky so it's just that's really really good um, but when you're using the phone like this you'll find that in some games there are a bit more hiccups um, they tend to turn into a bit of a slideshow at times but most importantly it's just not going to feel like a galaxy phone it's not going to feel really really fast and fluid um, you got your flipboard stuff which you don't want to get into so that that's just a bit disappointing but um, it doesn't matter. So uh, when when you get this phone, if you are going to get it, I highly recommend you use battery saving mode all the time. And uh, let's from here jump on to ultra battery saving mode. So that's going to be on here. So this is something that I don't like about this, but it's there for emergency purposes. I do like the fact that it's there and I do like the idea, but it just doesn't work as well as... Um, uh, well, forget it. It's just something there just to get you through the day so let's go ahead and turn battery saving mode on i mean ultra battery saving mode on and so what it's going to show you is all this stuff so let's go ahead and turn it on it's actually going to turn off the whole system 
and it's going to turn into ultra battery saving mode so what happens is it turns the display into grayscale so oh, is there a dog outside oh so in ultra battery saving mode it just turns into a completely different operating system go ahead and press the power button the web, the background is gone it's completely black and everything has gone grayscale uh, oh yes the fingerprint sensor actually still works um so i really like this mod but i've never used it and that's because it just it's not android you know that's what you want it's got it's got android running on it so you want android but it, it's not android um so what this is gonna do is limit the phone in every way possible and it's gonna take it to the next level just to save battery life so i think it's disabled wi-fi um, and it's disabled uh, a lot of things other than the settings but as you can see these are the only options in settings as well so going to display um what i found funny is that all the whites over here uh oh he's got even more brightness levels whoa it's going black bro what i found funny is that these white areas over here are not black don't know why the writing should be white and stuff should have taken a bit more um care over it but then again it's something you'll never know what they do so this is the main screen now you have your few apps and these are the only apps other than whatsapp which i found uh, was here i've actually deleted whatsapp and facebook was over here so it's basically turned into a doom phone uh, like with the exception of facebook and whatsapp and uh, these applications when you turn them on they actually add them to the screen over here if you turn them on they're just your uh, uh, normal facebook apps but it doesn't allow you to use wi-fi in this uh, in this mode i don't think so so i don't really see the point that these exist over here uh, if i want to get rid of them i click remove and then get rid of them sorry for the background noise um so essentially again it's just a doom phone so it's gonna last very very long on battery life i'm not sure about that as you can see everything is going black so that since it's an amoled screen it's gonna help a lot um in in terms of battery saving you know kind of works now let's go back to into normal mode um what i suggest is if you're gonna get this phone don't use that mode it just turns it into a completely different phone i don't really see the point in using it because if you put it in your pocket it's not going to drain the battery anyway so um it's just there for emergency cases um now as you can see the bu the backlight is actually turned on on the buttons again and if i turn the power saving on it's turned off so it just turned off um so yeah um i think it's been long enough i'll end the video here thank you guys for watching if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below and as always i'll see you again in another video